Welcome to another edition of Alpha Grid Contracting. Now today guys, I'm going to share with you a really quick do-it-yourself project um, and that is installing an electric water heater timer. Um, just a quick disclaimer, any wiring that you choose to do without a licensed electrician, you assume all liability. Um, this is just informational purposes. <clears throat> with that said, what you're going to begin with is you're going to pick up this timer. Um, you can get it at Lowe's, Home Depot, readily available. Um, now what goes down with it, and we'll actually open this up right here, is you have this manual override that sticks through, and that just turns it on or off if you want to turn it on whenever the timer is not available. Now as you can see right now this morning, um, the timer is past where the pins have say it, um, so it cuts off. This is the on switch, that's the off switch. Now right here I'm going to undo this in just a second and show you the wiring in because it's very simple. Um, but the first thing we're going to want to do is step over and disable our breaker. So let's do that first. Anytime that we're going to service anything, especially when it comes to AC and DC applies as well, you're going to want to turn off your water heater. Now, for the purpose of uh, education right now, I'm going to flip this off. And we're going to go over here and we're going to take that cover off and I'm going to show you what the inside workings looks like. Okay, now I've removed the safety cover um, because the power has been de-energized. Now what we have here is line one and line three, those two marked off, and then on number two and four we have load. And let me break that down for you real simple. Is the wiring that you have on your water heater, all you're going to do, and I'm actually gonna show you right here because I still have mine exposed, is you're gonna undo the wiring that was already in your water heater, and you're gonna bring those wires over to your timer. And then all you're going to do then is bring a new line back out from the timer over to your water heater and connect the appropriate wires as they were taken off because you should have a black wire and a white wire. Okay, now the way we're going to wire this is the line feed that was from originally going to your water heater. You're going to wire that in under pin number one and under pin number three. Okay, now the new wire that goes out to your water heater that's replacing the wire that was, you're going to put that under pin number two and pin number four. And in doing so, you've just set this up to be on a timer. At that point, you're going to put your pins, <clears throat> your trip-on pin, and your trip-off pins in the appropriate areas that you'd prefer on your dial. To set this dial, you just pull it out, rotate it, set it on the appropriate time. Do not ever move this pointer. That's showing where it's at currently. Now, with that said, I'm going to put the cover back on the safety area here. Just make sure all your grounds are connected as well. And at that point, you're ready to rock and roll. Now, I'm going to cover just a few points about this using this for off-grid purposes in a minute. Now, the purpose for adding a type of unit like this is for two reasons. Number one, um, if you still have utility access power to your home and you've not removed your water heater over to a, a off-grid inverter or a grid interactive inverter that can yet let utility access feed to it or strong enough to pull from your battery bank, um, you're going to want to put this on a timer because that's going to reduce the draw from your electric company. Let's face it, are we ever at home these days? Most people live a hundred mile an hour lifestyle so I mean if you're only heating water for two or three hours a day you're going to drop your electric bill quite substantially. Some people have even had up to an entire bill, one month's bill completely wiped out just by putting that unit on the wall. Secondly, cost effective um, later down the road as far as to your battery bank, what I mean by cost effective, I mean taxing the watts out of it. If you have an off-grid inverter, let's say you have a 20 amp fuse on your water heater and you've got a single water heater element installed into it and you plug the top or you have a single water heater element, a uh, water heater that just has it in the bottom of the unit instead of both. Well, for the example of mine being in my mobile home, <clears throat> with that said, if I put a low wattage element in it um, or you reduce it even smaller down to a 1500 watt element or um, a 3500 3, watt element you can run that off something as simple as a magnum uh, 4024 PAE inverter or a 40, uh, uh, 48 volt one I mean you know there's so many options at that point on a very affordable budget um, as far as inverters go so then with that on a timer you use um, only a couple hours a day worth of power off your battery bank instead of trying to heat that thing all the time. So it's actually critical once you're going to move your water heater off grid um, because at that point you're not wasting energy. So I hope that's a help to you and until we see you again here at Off Grid Contracting and at Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel, I hope you have a most blessed day in Yahushua and I.